Oh boy. That we are looking for a champion for, and this is a rematch of the Georgia State Championship. I mean, look at this bracket too. Uh, again, these games in the quarterfinals, these are not easy. You had five games, two five game sets in the quarterfinals, and then another five game set in the semifinal. FCS Innovation Academy up against Brooklyn, like you just said, James, as we look at the head to head. This is a Georgia State championship rematch between these two squads fcs innovation academy they won that first series three to one so with splatoon three this is a chance for brookwood to get some revenge here in the 2024 play versus cup and i think for for brookwood they have maybe a bit of an advantage here if they can go back and look at the tape and learn what to do differently this time and maybe come with a counter strategy, uh, which we do see quite a bit in, in many, many games, many competitions. If a team does take the time to review the tape, and find the weaknesses and, and make plans. But FCS, I mean, they took the title. They right now, I think, are the favorite just simply from that fact. Yeah, I mean, I'm very curious to see it. And like Splatoon 3 is a game that I personally have really loved. It's one of those unique titles. You don't really see anything else like it on the market, right? I mean, we understand that with Rocket League being one of a kind games. Splatoon kind of fits that same category. Just paint at each other, capturing towers, and at the end of the game, that cool overview showing you how much paint has been doled and out. And all, all of the different paint spitters as well that yeah. they have there. It's it's You get to see a lot of strategy. I think Hearthstone, it's a different type of strategy where you plan that deck and you, you plan what cards you want to put in it, whereas Splatoon, so much of it is that fast pace, on-the-fly decision-making, and uh, you know, I'm just excited to get into it. But Jorby, before we throw it to the casters, let's get our predictions in the book. Yes. Who do you got? You know what? Matchup? Look, last time it didn't work out for him. This time it's working out for him. Give me Brookwood. I think they've got this against FCS Innovation. They lost in four last time, but I believe they can take it. I'll say in five. All right, you go Brookwood. Then I am going FCS Innovation Academy, the reigning champs for the state of Georgia. But we've got a rematch. So who will be the, the Play versus Cup champion for Splatoon? Well, let's find out and send it over to the casters. Thank you so much to James and Jorby for the pass up. As I said, we are getting into the Splatoon 3 side of things. It is a bit of a revenge match from that Georgia State Championship mm -hmm. back. I believe it was on May 1st, so just over a month ago. That's going to be fresh in their minds. we got Jobin. We've got Fundy. I mean, it's Championship Day and nothing more you could ask for. Yeah, Splatoon 3. A little bit of a fresh, uh, you know, title for the both of us here, Jobin. But the thing about Splatoon is you come in and you get a shooter game but it's a nintendo shooter game so nintendo always going to put their own spin on the genre and i think splatoon kind of just encapsulates that perfectly the hosts were talking about it a little bit there throughout the best of five because this is going to be a best of five format here we get five completely different game modes so every single map is going to be a new game mode and they're all kind of you know their own take on on a capture the flag or on like a zone control kind of hard point type game mode and then you know you get clam blitz at the end which is collection and kind of drop off base almost looks like pokemon unite type like a moba almost working <laughs> around the map and you know working for that overall goal for the team yeah, that's why it's a very interesting game because it's a game where map control gives you the ability to kind of mobilize yourself. You go under the ground, you're able to swim. So it's it's a weird yeah. game because fighting for map control is not typically, it's not, you, you fight for map control in other games, but not in the traditional sense in this game. You're actively fighting for map control, not just to kind mm -hmm. of hold space or hold the head glitch or hold some kind of corner. You are actively fighting to give yourself a lane, to get onto the objective, to set up a route, to try to get onto high ground, to set up some of these objectives, get some of these super abilities off. So it should be a very, very good game. The bracket looking back at least a couple of games we saw it uh, just a couple of frames ago with Jorby and James but FCS Innovation the ones that ended up beating Brookwood ab about a month ago they've had a tougher run to the final so far Brookwood has pretty much 3-0'd every single team that they have played up to the final so I wonder if FCS getting that extra little rub on top of hey we beat these guys a month ago we beat them 3-1 we watched the VOD maybe an hour or two ago just to kind of refresh this wasn't super close in some of the games so we're gonna see if there's any adjustments to be made I mean hey this is championship day this is for all the money this is for I think six k to first 2k to second for this game so quite a big disparity i know those kids would love to get their hands on that cash yeah i mean you got to remember r regardless of what happens today or regardless of this series we're headed into both of those teams met in the finals fcs innovation clearly seemingly stronger in that state finals but 
like you mentioned, Brookwood has been tearing through this play versus Cub bracket. A lot of 3-0s. I think there was a 3-1 or a 3-2 in there, but that team is just looking very, very strong. And coming into this grand finals, I mean, both teams going to be happy. An $8,000 prize pool, $6,000 going to first, $2,000 going to second to be split amongst the teams there. It's a big one regardless, oh. but you definitely want to shoot for first. Looks like we do have game one getting underway. Starting off with Turf War. This is exactly what you expect from Splatoon, that classic game mode there. You're trying to cover the whole map in your team's colored ink. Yeah, we, we talked about this like you said, and this one is going to be all about map control. You're trying to spray as much of the map as possible and at the very end of the game, which is why these game modes can be very tricky. They're in some of these other party games as well, because sometimes these games, if you don't get a super early lead and you find a way to snowball, it feels like it really does come down to that last five to ten seconds where you have to kick in that clutch gene, really start firing on all cylinders, get that high ground, start finding some of these splats, and then you can try to win the game that way, because obviously a game where the, the pace is constantly fluctuating, the score is going to constantly change you have to be on your on the ball literally until the last second yeah a hundred percent unless you're sitting there with a 70 80 percent lead all around the map but it's also something you can't necessarily just take a quick look at and tell where your team is at sometimes it comes down to that final decision at the end of the game and you know it could be a 51 to 49 percent type of deal it can get very very down to the wire especially you know with teams of this caliber teams that we know have played each other before they kind of have a little bit of intel to work around so far this yellow side of i believe it's brookwood there in the yellow they seemingly strong but then again it flips in an instant especially towards the center of this map yeah, this game mode is going to get, a. I mean, this game in general, extremely mixy across every mode. Obviously, small mm -hmm. maps, high octane, high action, but this game especially, because there's not one central objective, it's going to be a lot harder, like you said, to find where your teammates are. Try to coordinate as much as you can, as we are going to see a nice elimination there coming out of it, looks like one of these, the side of Brookwood. So right now, I mean, only a minute left in the game, and that's the thing with Splatoon 2. Oh, these games are so damn short that you don't really have a lot of time to come back if it's needed, but you also have to make sure that you are on top of your game. And I mean, yeah, look at that is a very good explanation. This is looking at completely yellow with 40 seconds left. So if you're FCS right now, you've got to find a way to try to fight back because it is not looking good. Yeah, basically the, the super moves, the, the actual term is evading me right now, but the charged up moves do come area now it's fcs kind of just fighting out of their own base here trying to cover as much as possible starting to get a lot more control of the middle and they do have their own charges their own supers available could be something to just pop off at the last second and try to get a jump on them you've really only got five seconds to play we're gonna have to see what the final decision comes down to couple are popped was that an elim right at the end i couldn't really tell I think it may have been, but we're. I think the game might actually be a little bit closer than I think it Ooh. looked like we saw I think FCS orange, fighting back at the end. We are going to see is. exactly now. It, it is eventually, it is going to be at the side of Brookwood grabbing that first map. So it looked like it was maybe possibly going back to FCS toward the end there. But honestly, when there was a minute left, seeing that boat basically all in yellow, that's got to feel bad. That basically is going to signal not necessarily the end of the game, but it's like, man, we have a long way to go. And the thing with Splatoon as well, basically on every single map, you can get spawn trapped and you can really get stuck in your spawn. People can play this high ground and really try to, you know, mm -hmm. cut off any oxygen that you can have from spawn. So if you get that early push, that early spawn trap in a four minute game where the clock does not stop, you have got to be so damn good getting out of your spawn and then trying to regroup. Yeah, they do. The games do go by in the blink of an eye there. And, you know, we saw I, I tried to touch on it in game. Things were just moving so fast. <laughs> really, though, the crux of that win for Brookwood there was the special weapons there charging up mm -hmm. those moves and being able to use them to absolutely dominate the center of the map where all the action is going to come down to because off of the spawn you're kind of expecting to just cover that whole side of, of your own yeah. base essentially you're expecting that to be covered towards the end of the game you need to fight for the no man's land out in the middle the real contested area and when you've got three players popping their special abilities all at the same time being able to cover that whole thing and then as you said it it kind of converted to a trap in the base of fcs's side of fcs innovation side there 
they for 40 seconds they couldn't really do much and it just looked like yeah. more and more yellow orange was just covering that map and and the blue side fell short because of it yeah, if you're stuck in the spawn for 40 seconds in basically a three, three and a half minute game, I mean, that's 25 to 30% of the game where you're just not really able to get active on the server. You're not really able to go play anything. So like you said, mm -hmm. trying to get these special abilities chained up, all you have to do is find one to two really, really good, well-executed floods. Like you said, pop everything at the same time, send it all maybe 25, 30 seconds left because you also said it good too. Basically, each team, let's give them each 40%. You're fighting for that middle 20. It, obviously, you want to get more, but you're fighting for that middle 20. You're trying to fight for that line of scrimmage. So great job by BHS there, though. Brookwood pulled it off in game one. We did say they ended up losing that series three to one back in May. So are we going to see the same thing happen again? Or is FCS going to find something to pull it through? Uh, so we should be getting into game very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we do have some replays, too, oh, from yeah. that last match. And, you know, while we're taking a look at these, I guess we can touch on really the rest of the series here. Moving and touch on really the rest of the series here. Moving into game two, it is going to be Rainmaker. That's going to be the game mode coming through. Similar to like a capture the flag objective base. You're trying to grab this weapon in the middle. The Rainmaker there acts as a bit of a rail gun, but you're also a target when you do pick that one up there's a bit of a barrier you got to break through you know there, there's complexities to it but in the end grab the rainmaker bring it to the opponent's base and you're essentially trying to take your points like that and you kind of do got to move it slowly throughout some checkpoints throughout the map as well but it's pretty much just team play to capture this objective and kind of march it forward closer and closer to the opponent's base yeah, and similar to like a CTF kind of game mode, the person that does have the Rainmaker, you're not going to be able to switch to all of your weapons. You're not going to have access to your full kit. So, you know, you do have to get a slight nerf. You can't just you can't just run around with the Rainmaker and start popping on, mm -hmm. on everybody. But we also have seen the Rainmaker can and will be used as a weapon if somebody holds it too long. Every single player gets sort of a timer on it when they pick it up. Typically, you're not going to see that timer run out because you saw the action in the pace of game one. This game doesn't really allow for any breaks, and that's kind of what's really, really cool about it is it is so high-paced. There's so much going on all the time fighting for map control trying to find these swimming lanes popping off with the specials but bhs would love to repeat that game one performance and honestly i expect we're probably going to see a four or five game series especially from two teams that have already met but maybe one of these teams said hey it is time to win this championship it is time to lock in the prize money it is time to get a 3-0 yeah i mean that's a lot <laughs> speaking of the prize money that's a nice first place prize staring them down it could be all the motivation that they need i mean we saw specifically from brooklyn would we saw the amount of three O's throughout this playoffs bracket, even moving. I think they had a three O in semifinals as well. That could have been the closer match that I'm thinking of. We'll have to double check on that. But I think game game two is pretty well ready to get underway soon enough here. Rainmaker going to be a nice, nice kind of shakeup as well, because these teams now they're actually going to be fighting over an objective yeah. rather than just kind of, you know, scattered parts on the map. Yeah, it kind of converges to the center in the turf war. But here, you know, there's a bit of there's an objective to play around. There's an area that we're expecting all yeah. of the action to converge around. And it kind of changes the strategy, too, because you're fighting almost 4v4 most of the time with the teams. Yeah, I think a game mode like this is going to tailor more toward the team that has a bit more better strategy or can more well execute a game plan because Turf War, obviously, you can kind of just make it Ooga Booga as long as you're running routes. If you find a couple of picks and set up a spawn trap once for 10, 15 seconds, you can really turn the tides of a game. But a game mode like this where you're constantly spawning, you constantly have to cycle players to the objective, you need to make sure that somebody is protecting the Rainmaker carrier, make sure that everything is battened down, all the defenses are lined up so you can constantly escort the objective. So this is going to be a lot more team play, like you said, there's going to be a lot more coordinated pushes, a lot more coordinated attacks and less kind of these, you know, maybe one for one duels. Ultimately, though, the players, they, they might do whatever they want. They might say, screw That's it. We're true. just going to go for the one on ones. We're going to go gunny all day, all along. But I think the better team, Odyssey, will walk out. The strategy will prevail in these next couple of game modes. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things, too, is uh, yeah, I guess we can kind of touch on. You'll see it soon. But on some of these maps, the Rainmaker itself has a bit of a shield on it. And when one mm -hmm. team actually builds up enough enough paint and inks it enough to actually pop that shield, it'll do a big explosion of paint in that area and will take out anyone on that other team. So it gives you a lot of control in that area. Like we said, the paint is really the key to movement in this game. And movement, of course, is the key to really outplaying your opponent in most of your engagements here in Splatoon. 
And I feel like the average video game meta is honestly, like, if you can move in video games nowadays, I feel like movement is honestly the biggest skill difference that we see in any modern shooter, any modern game. It feels like everyone has is kind of getting to the same level of, like, mechanical gun skill, but the ability to find these little nifty ways to move around the map, you know, craft these creative angles, sort of catch people off guard, ultimately looks like it is going to be the way to win a lot of engagements. And right now, BHS immediately grabbing a couple picks, did grab the Rainmaker as well, but obviously this game, there is going to be a lot of contestion back and forth. There is going to be a lot of fist fighting, and it looks like it is actually going to get flipped. Yeah, and, and that's the toughest part, too, is actually keeping that Rainmaker in hand. You see... It's so F hard. FCS, they grab it back, pushes it up uh, just a little bit for the blue side, but you're immediately taken down because it literally paints a target on your back. A nice bullseye for everyone to know exactly where to aim <laughs> that blaster, that splat cannon. Really dependent on uh, what you got. They even got Katanas in this now. They got Splatanas here in Splatoon. That's a Splatoon 3 thing uh, that we were just learning. We were learning about here before the that cast. Was not very, sure how popular. Very, very recent. Yeah. yeah not sure <laughs> how popular too, right? it is. Depending how new it is. But it's wow. Cool. <laughs> is, is that uh, it already? That That is unironically... That is already the game. I saw it getting close to being over yeah. potentially, but I thought that FCS was going to be able to battle back, but... BHS with potentially a world record any percent speed run in map two. I mean, I knew they were being dominant. That run looked good. I assumed FCS was going to find a couple of picks. They grabbed the Rainmaker back for a few seconds. I was like, okay, game stabilizing. Lost a single team fight and lost the map. Yeah. And and keep in mind, it's only, what, a five-minute timer on the map? Three-minute timer? Yeah, in, in some of these game modes. I think it changes uh, depending yeah. on the game mode there, but just domination in the rainmaker side of things now from what i understand not a lot of rainmaker games do end up going to time basically because of the checkpoints yeah. and stuff like that eventually one team is going to march it through but that was just quick that was crazy. that was swift and it was just targeted annihilation there on the objective and yeah like, like i said just not expecting it to go that fast you did see fcs innovation there they had a good hold on it for a little while. It was a very back and forth towards the center, but it only takes two, three players falling to be able to move that Rainmaker so far. And they're able to just drop it right on that objective. A quick win and a quick 2-0, putting the backs against the wall of FCS Innovation here. It's Brookwood. They want the run back. They want the 3-0 here in the finals. I respect it because even not having a, a ton of Splatoon games under our belt, if I see any game end in, let's even call it, there's a four minute a timer. Minute if it half. ends in, it maybe even less, that mm -hmm. is absolute insanity. I think BHS right now is on an all time revenge tour. They very much remember that 3-1 for a Georgia State Championship. I mean, it was a month and three days ago at this point. It was on May 1st. So that is fresh in the back of their minds. They're trying to finish off the school year, trying to grab that first place. And I mean, game one definitely was, I don't want to say it was a lot closer because they did have a massive lead that just kind of slowly got eaten into, but they were never really in danger of losing. And game two, I mean, if you blink twice, you would have missed the entire game. That was yeah absolutely clinical as we mentioned earlier and right now if i'm bhs i am feeling so good about the rest of the series and if i'm fcs i mean what can you even take away from the first two games do you feel like you didn't play well did you feel like something didn't work when a game ends that quickly it's honestly sometimes hard to find what's wrong sometimes you just look around and it's like we got splatted seven eight times and i guess we just lose yeah and then you just you have to look towards the rest of the series and that's the key is constantly just looking towards that next map okay you know, it was a quick loss in Rainmaker. It was a qu like a quick defeat there. There's no no way you can kind of beat around that bush. But you can go back to game one and say, okay, we kind of lost the special battle towards the end of the game there. Maybe we just need to, you know, rotate ours a little bit better, be a little bit quicker on that communication and kind of fight back when that does happen. So when you go to game three, when you go towards this other game mode, I believe we're looking at splat zones is gonna be the one. So more similar to a turf war where you're kind of controlling specific parts of the map, but it's also a designated part of the map and the rest of it doesn't really matter how much ink you have down, you're just looking to control those given areas. So it's gonna be a little bit more team-based once again. I think yeah. Turf War is the closest thing to just like a free-for-all. It's team-based, mm -hmm. but you're really just trying to 
put as much value on the field yeah. as you can for your team. Whereas a lot of these other game modes have more of a, a focused objective that every teammate is kind of pushing towards. And you do have to work together to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, I said that SCS was getting tested by Iron all the way through the bracket. They had a couple times. I don't want to say too much. They still had a lot of 3-1s, a couple of 3-0s, but they got pushed to map 5 once or twice. They went in a couple knockdown dragout series, so I gotta think they have some level of resilience in them. I mean, you won the championship last month. You've had a relatively tough bracket run in some of these stages, so now you're down 2 nothing in the finals for the Play versus Cup. It is basically going to be now or never, but I do think this game mode might help them a little bit because this one's going to be a little bit less momentum-based, where that last game mode in the in the uh, control or in the um the rainmaker sorry it feels like right they lost two fights and they, the game just completely fell out of their hands where in this game what it feels like maybe you don't get control of the area right away but you have time to flood set up these abilities try to get the break on the point at least try to buy some time back in that fashion so it maybe it's one of those game modes where it's a little bit more forgiving if you make a couple of mistakes but granted make a couple of mistakes in a five minute game down to nothing the way bhs has played i've got to think that is a recipe for a swift three nothing yeah, and depending on the map here, you might not even be fighting over multiple zones. It could just be mm -hmm. one or yeah. two. That seems to be kind of the consensus in these maps here. And if it's just one zone you're fighting over, you could see another repeat of the, you know, that Rainmaker type map where you just see <laughs> splat after splat, Elim splat, and then it just keeps kind of snowballing there. And yeah, you have a little bit more time, especially there in splat zones, but once that timer starts ticking, once the control is there, you really have to fight for it because there's only 100 points to tick down for each team. And you also got to kind of get your own points in here and there, trying to chip in as much as possible because you don't want to be down 70 as the main timer is kind of ticking away, getting closer to like 30, 40 seconds left in the match. And you could just be down. And even if you're not going to get taken down by the full 100 points, you could just be down enough that when that timer expires, it, it might not mean much. So you, ha you have to get your jabs in where you can. <laughs> And if you're FCS Innovation, if you start this game and you get taken to taken to town immediately, then you look, it's easy to tell players, oh, forget the last game ever happened. That is not possible to do as a human being. Everyone says it to players. It's like, I was just playing in that game. I'm very well aware that we're down to nothing. You can't really shake that. There's no way to properly shake it. So if you get off to a slow start this game, it could manifest into something much more dire. It could manifest into that three nothing in that Brookwood High School Championship. Yeah, you can already see action converging towards this main zone is going to be one of the single zoned maps here so really just fighting around you see right now it's got the blue outline there it's a little faint but when the players are fighting there it's you can kind of tell the zone that we're kind of working with and already very back and forth you want to keep the score close Get your little little strides in, even if it does get taken away. A nice 15 to 20 point chunk off of there can mean a lot. And Brookwood already so much control. I mean... 25 points up. Blue, very tough time from FCS Innovation to move back here. Yeah, this is going to be very tough. And the fact that because you do you do get that time penalty added, so they are going to have to play a little bit further through. But when you're already at 80, you have that small time penalty on yourself. Brookwood is more than happy with the start of this game so far. Because obviously, once they lose this point, FCS is also going to be burdened with that time penalty as well. So Brookwood right now, they are in control of the game. They're able to grab the point back. They can start away on this time penalty. And I mean, if you're FCS right now, three and a half minutes on the timer, we always mention how fast these games are because it is a core part of it. You've got to make sure you control this point, get a nice long stand of control, get this time penalty gone, and get yourself right back into this game. Even some of the special weapons, right? You've got the ink strikes ready in the back there. There's a few things from the side of FCS Innovation. Ooh, they, pop, break. they pop most, if not all of them there, and might, might have someone who popped out of the game for a second there, but keep playing nonetheless. Still a lot of control over from Brookwoods here. Actually, I don't know. Do we have... Is that two DCs at the top? I, I Well, we're going to have to check this out, I think, but... I think that right might now, be... Uh, that might be the case. <laughs> yeah, I think FCS, though, control of the point. We're going to see exactly what happens. If they can. I'm not sure if they can join back in once the game's already started here, but we do have a lot to work off of in terms of analysis, kind of figuring out these teams here. We do know that Brookwood, when they're on top of things, when they do have 
you know, the player numbers to back it up. They can have insane, insane runs on a lot of these maps here. But I wonder, they may just have to take take the loss on this one. We'll have to get full confirmation later, but... I was going to say, imagine, but now imagine if you're Brookwood, if you could win a 2v4 for the 3 0 in the championship if the, map, <laughs> if the map actually counts, but obviously that's going to be basically impossible. You can't fault them. It was honestly a dead even game up to the point of the disconnect. So mm -hmm. this was a fantastic game. This was the closest game, obviously, by far. I give a lot of credit to FCS because even before the disconnects, they actually had broken the point two to three times. They were in control of the point before the disconnect. So this was a much better game three out of them. Assuming it is going to be a two to one scoreline, but obviously you have to wait for confirmation on potential resets. And assuming, right, it's a Nintendo game, I don't think you're going to be able to join back, even with the custom lobbies and modern games and other consoles. Yeah. There's usually not a way back into like ranked or custom lobbies. So we are going to see if the map count is going to be two to one. If you're FCS, you can wipe some sweat off your forehead. Even if it was a bit of a gift, you will more than happily take that in the championship. And it's something, too, you kind of started to find your stride as FCS yep. at the end of that map there. Even even before uh, the, the desyncs or the disconnects there, whatever you want to call them, you did see them grabbing 20, 30 points. Mm -hmm. Brooks, Brookwood had a very strong, I think it was like a 45-point kind yep. of run there that really did put themselves in the lead and it made FCS have to fight back. But of course we did start to see that from them. Part of it coming from charging up those special weapons, using them on the site, you get nice 10, 20 points, you know, any points is something when you get that control there, especially when you're playing catch up. Yeah, I feel, I feel almost cheated for that map. We finally yeah. had, like, the unstoppable force and the immovable object. We finally had a 50-50 game. Everybody started to pop off. We were seeing really, really good team fighting, really good map control, which I was assuming would benefit FCS in the long run because things hadn't really worked out. So it's like, okay, maybe we bring it down to the fundamentals, bring it down to the basics. Everyone try to get on this point, watch each other's backs, try to handle our angles, fight for map control. We're going to try to fight our way back into map three that way. So still going to have to wait till decide what the, uh, the ruling is going to be. Obviously, Obviously, confirmed two disconnects, I assume, because when the players get eliminated, you see, like, the gray X's, and I just saw two, two black two empty spots, squids. Like, that, yeah. that doesn't look good anymore. Yeah, the, the empty squids did not inspire confidence, to say the least, but, yeah, we are, they're still figuring out exactly what's going to happen here, I assume. Regardless, the lobby has to get reset. We got to get back mm -hmm. into this, whether it be another playthrough of map three, or we just move in to map four game four looking through the rest of the series because we've kind of been going map by map here but we do yeah. have you know a few minutes here now to kind of talk about this moving on to a possible map four map five situation tower control for that map for game four game mode that's gonna be almost like the closest thing i could say is like a push in overwatch if you've ever played that where there's a main objective and both teams are trying to move it along a path back and forth in this game it literally is just a tower it literally is a tower moves along a track there uh but you do have there's a little bit of area on the tower to put ink down which allows for some cool movement and close range fights specifically on the tower um and of course if there's anyone from both teams it's kind of contested and it just stays in place there so trying to just escort that one to the end and that one similar to rainmaker could be one where you just see you know one dominant run one fight or two that goes very very well into one team's favor and they just bring that sucker all the way to the end and then of course we've got game five which is clam blitz which is pandemonium to say the yeah. least everyone's <laughs> collecting clams around the map you can splat your opponents take their clams you're trying to drop them at specific goals around the map one for each team and i think that goes up to 100 for each team as well i believe 100 is like the magic yeah. number for scoring here in splatoon yeah, I think, it, I think usually because it counts down in this game a lot, I think it counts down from 100. And like you said, if we get to that map 5, which I will be very, very hopeful to do so, because I think, honestly, the farther we get into the series, obviously the more hype. FCS obviously has to pull off the reverse sweep, which would add another layer to this story between these two schools that might carry on into next year, into the fall leagues, where it's yeah. like, hey, we got the Georgia State Championship. Hey, we got the Play Versus Cup. We're going to bring our two best teams forward, create a nice little rivalry for ourselves in that Play Versus Network. So two great teams. FCS, I think we're still waiting on a 
ruling to possibly get confirmation, but we are going to have to see how it is going to be played out. But FCS, you at least potentially got a map, and if you didn't, you got some confidence, at least got a building block to go on into the rest of the series. And as you said, I really hope we get to see these third, fourth, and fifth game modes, or I guess fourth and fifth, depending on the restart of map three. I think we are actually going to have at least a couple of replays to, uh, to bide our time while we do some yapping. Yeah, for sure. Take a look at these past few maps here. We do have a little bit to go off of and a lot of what we've been seeing, a lot of what I'm I'm expecting we would see in in replays there. I'm not sure if we're getting them through or not though. This is just uh, you know, things gears got to turn in the background, but nonetheless, we've been seeing a lot of just Brookwood carry honestly domination rainmaker we can talk about how swift that map was and the precedent that it kind of sets for the rest of the series and then of course you know we've got the 4v4 part of what we saw there in splat zones which was all Brookwood once again so even though that grand finals that state grand finals the Georgia finals there was only about a month ago a month and a week maybe already it looks like there has been a large shift in terms of just these teams how they're matching up against each other and because we looked at that vod it looked like fcs innovation really kind of just had the number of brookwood for most yeah. of that state championship series and now we're here in the play versus cup you know kind of our our final send-off for <laughs> play versus here and and brookwood is back and and they're killing it and I think we are replaying the third map, if I'm not, or potentially, no, we four? are. We, yeah, we are going on to game four. So a bit of unluckiness if you are Brookwood High School, but this also gives you one more reason to win in game four, exact your revenge, show them that that map was indeed a fluke and see if you can end up locking this one down. Yeah, so actually, I believe this is a replay. Of we are the replaying. Game here. It is a replay. The <laughs> map the map threw me off for a second because I thought it, it looked different, but we are definitely replaying. Yeah, it's definitely the same map. Well, I thought I saw this balloon in the center. I thought we were seeing the tower and then I realized there was, you know, no, no track <laughs> for the tower, nor is this a, a map for, the, for that game mode, I believe, which is a whole nother thing. But I believe they're staying on the same sides here. Yeah, Brookwood yep. still sitting there in the orange, which means we've got FCS innovation handedly in the lead there and you know we saw it before a few of those disconnects fcs they had control of the zone they were playing quite well a couple special weapons popped keep their control for now and they might find their own 40 50 point lead here before anything changes yeah, we saw BHS popping a couple of those airstrikes just to try to maybe see if they can get some zone control, try to see if they can fight their way toward the center because right now, it has been all FCS all day long to open up this map three. And I mean, maybe the restart cheese isn't going to be enough for Brookwood High School to battle back in this one. FCS was looking like they had the slight upper hand in that first go round, but round two definitely looks like it is definitively going to them. I mean, look at 40 remaining. You're already cutting into that time penalty. It is going down a second by second. You still have mid control. You've got high ground control everybody is firing on all cylinders i mean this is absolute domination out of them yeah i, I look at the score this is the complete opposite of what we saw at the starting of last game and i think it just shows you know the key of getting a, a good kind of team positioning setup if you see where everyone is right now from the side of fcs look at the splats that are coming through nobody can kind of you know break this point necessarily and really gain any control get any ink down that might that's be it. one that's the game basically from start to finish i think brookwood had about nine points there was it oh no they got more than that but still an absolute knockout as it says there completely flips it on its head and now you know our overlay is looking pretty correct right now we are moving into game yeah. four <laughs> with a 2-1 score line fcs really pulled it together there in splat zones listen had a little bit of restart cheese but the script is already written once the overlay says it it is destined to become true in fcs i mean there is not a better way i think they're honestly happier after the restart because they won so much more dominantly that gives you just a breath of fresh air it's like okay Rainmaker didn't go our way. This map, though, restarted. We handled business to a T. That is exactly the way you have to get back in a series. You have to reverse sweep them. You had to start with one map. Now, hey, you're playing essentially in a best of three, trying to reverse sweep in that to get your way in. So you're 33% of the way there, and they looked infinitely better on that map than the first two combined.
yeah, it, it gives you a moment to breathe. It gives you a moment to relax. Yes, you know, you're still on match point in the series. Brookswood can still take us into tower control and find the series there. But reverse sweeps, they go one game at a time. And FCS Innovation Academy, they've started it. They have, you know, the building blocks of that reverse sweep. And a dominant, dominant game three is exactly what you want to see to start that. You've got two more game modes ahead of you. All you have to do is, you know, keep playing like this. Keep playing with... It looked like it was communication, really. The mm -hmm. rotations of players and the special weapons there throughout that game just kept nearly 100% blue ink on that splat zone for basically the entire map. Yeah, it's just the way they were able to control the map, control the high ground. We could even see them kind of not necessarily baiting, but forcing Brookwood to kind of just pop the special abilities early because they were so desperate to fight for mid control. They had yeah. no way, no angles, to, no routes to get back to that mid space to try to grab control of the point. So it was a clinical effort out of FCS. And you imagine how happy that they would be if they're able to reverse sweep after winning three to one a month ago, they said, listen, three, one, we handled it second time up to nothing. That's a fluke. We're going to come handle business once more. So there's a lot of pressure on both of these teams to try to close out. Cause if you're Brookwood, it's like, if this goes to a game five and you're like, we had these guys on the ropes to nothing. We had started to dominate them in the series. We were this close to revenge. Now we got to play a game five with four or five minutes to decide a lot of money into that first and second place. So I think this is going to keep ramping up as we get further and further along. And FCS, one more chance to force the game five. It is still championship point for Brookwood, though. Yeah, I think for a bit, you know, even me and you, Jobin, definitely had, you know, quick series for brookwood in my head for sure i know after the first two maps especially after that rainmaker i was thinking okay brookwood's got it they just have <laughs> to go into game three we get the game three you know we get the little fluke little mix up they replay the map and it's completely turned on its head fcs innovation had you know a couple minutes to breathe and kind of figured out i, I think it really dawned on them necessarily the situation that they were in backs against the wall reverse sweep needs to happen you're running back the georgia state finals this time it's for the play versus cup you've got six thousand dollars on the line for first place you gotta go down swinging regardless I wish there was that money in high school esports when I was growing up, when I was in high school, maybe nine, 10 years ago, because I would have been grinding any game I could. Have. If I saw this prize pool for any game, I would have so much motivation to be the best that I could possibly, be, especially for the high school level where it's like, usually you're grabbing a group of your friends. Maybe some of you are high ranked, maybe some of you are not. But when you have one common goal like this, that it's like, this is what we're working for the entire year. We got denied a championship last, last month, but this is the kind of stuff that we work for all year that can get you to play possibly in college later on or get you looks, get you some offers and have a successful career going through the rest of esports that way. So both of these schools, always a lot to play for. And map four, we, we said earlier, it is going to be tower control. So we're going to see if this kind of single objective game mode is going to tailor more toward FCS again. It definitely looked like it in that game three. Brookwood definitely has to make some adjustments or maybe up the communication a bit. Honestly, maybe sometimes you just get hand stiff. Maybe they just couldn't get any eliminations, couldn't really get any map presence that way. But now you're going to have that single objective try Trying to push it back and forth to the end of that base so we're gonna see if brookwood uh can close it out here in four yeah and if i'm understanding it correctly as well tower control another one with kind of progress checkpoints built in yep. to the game mode as well so you kind of move it forward get that checkpoint you're trying to reach a further checkpoint than the opponent obviously they're gonna push it back but you at least get to kind of set your progress in stone and then move towards that next milestone but like we said, these game modes can often just take themselves very quickly to the end of that objective. And you, you're typically not waiting for the timer to run down unless it's a really, really back and forth, really scrappy game. And it honestly could be. But this series so far has really just shown us either one team or the other is taking this map win and you're going to know it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's kind of how the series does feel. We had we had one or two competitive spots and one or two maps, but other than that, it's been one team just absolutely starting off the game, dictating the pace, controlling the course of action, and then working their way through there to get things going. So right now, Brookwood looks like they might have the slight potential advantage fighting through the mid. Though I think we are. I think that might actually be the katana. So yeah, this might katana. actually be seeing some of the melee weapons. Yeah, so the new weapons are going to get added. They're going to get active right now. And this point though, still being fought over until eventually FCS. They're going to break the line. 
Yeah, I believe there's a specific one that we looked at, a specific version of that katana that did come out, I think, on, like, June 1st, like, literally with this new, I guess, season or patch that came through for Splatoon there. I'm not sure if that's the one that he's using. I don't believe it is. So this could be a more legacy one, might have a little bit more... Uh, experience on it but that's the cool thing too about a lot of these weapons is there's multiple versions of them that have slightly different variations in the pattern of the attack the speed of the attack and things like that uh if they can't get their supers going they are gonna lose the game in under two minutes that thing got 74 out of 100 close. it did for fcs that run was absolutely magical from them we did see a couple of the supers coming out out of brookwood trying to at least stop some of the bleeding slow down some of this push because it has been all fcs innovation all day long in this map four they've got map five set in their sights right now point finally going to be stalled out for a couple seconds but once they get to that last checkpoint and they get that one across i mean this is going to be a very hard game to fight back from because we talked about when you're able to get the paint and get map control now bhs is going to have to fight all the way back across the map replace all that blue paint with yellow if they really want to start to swim and get some of that control so this is going to be a very very hard three minutes Ah, but the double splat in the backside, look at how fast that was moving. They weren't able to get any further progress. But some of these special weapons coming out from FCS Innovation, the multi-splats are really what's kind of giving them the opportunity for this progress. And they're looking to bring it right back into the same situation here. Look at how fast that tower is moving. Couple more down from the side of Brookwood. It's tough right now for them. There they are. They're at the yeah, checkpoint. Have oof. to keep it moving. Yeah, and the checkpoint also counts for the time. So it's going to go down right to 18. And this is essentially going to be the last stand for Brookwood in game four. If they were to try to stop and win the championship, they, they, they will stop it. it. They saved it at the one yard line, dropping in a couple of airstrikes to try to see if they can at least keep map control. But you've got to think that was only a flash in the pan. I'm not sure they're All going to four. be able to ride this momentum. They've only got two minutes left. FCS stopped quite literally on the goal line. It is going to give Brooklyn a chance to get back in this game. But you see how much work they have to do. Are they going to be able to find the angle? It was actually such an explosion of both colored paint. I could not tell what was going on until I saw all four players from FCS down. And now it's Brookwood who has control of this tower and is actually finding fairly consistent elims to go along with it. One, one opponent down here, another over there. The long range weapons from FCS aren't really dealing with Zell here on the tower. And they've got two players on it. From what I understand, the tower always moves at a fixed speed, but multiple players will count down the checkpoints faster, which is something of note. So when it does get stopped, you want to put multiple players on there, but you're also oh, sitting ducks on the tower. Look at the flip. Yeah, they were able to find a clean break onto the tower, so... Looks like FCS could potentially swing this one back in their favor. And for them, all they have to do is play out the last minute of this game. As long as they don't get beat, they are sure a fire to win at this game. Although we are going to see one dead for both sides. Is Brookwood able to just continue this momentum? Try to see if they can swing this one back. FCS, you only need the one. You still have the lead, but you see now, Brookwood, they are finding some of these splats and they are starting to march down. This tower is going to start to hit this next objective checkpoint. And if we're able to get through checkpoint two, this is going to come down to one more team fight to decide the entire game after FCS was stopped at one. Oh, the Splatana is no joke. Did you see them getting close yeah. range with that thing? Very fast attack speed. You've got the little charge shot as well that's going to actually be used for putting paint on the ground, putting ink around the map there, and some crazy movement you can do with the sword for sure. So far, though, we're seeing a lot of engagements go the way of Brookwood, but the early lead, the early, the 99 points from FCS may just mean the end of it unless this overtime this is the last push can mean the clutch it's all down to this you cannot drop off of that tower not for a second brookwood 15 for the championship but they get instantly broken it is a wombo combo out of f c s brookwood with a great stand toward the end of the map they fought back as hard as they possibly could they were down basically 99 to 0 in essence they brought it back ended up winning it out 
just couldn't finish the map at one. They would have loved to have avoided that last couple of stressful minutes where it was like, is Brookwood really about to break us down? They have, they win three team fights in a row, get it down to like 14, I think it was in the end, but game five, we are going in. Now, if you're Brookwood, I know that sweat is starting to build up, but you've got to dial it in one game. Forget the other four maps. You're playing a best of one for all the marbles. I'm sweating for them for both teams <laughs> right now. I mean, we're taking it to game five. The reverse sweep is on the board for FCS here. And Brookwood, as much as they had the rally in that game there, I mean, they got to 85 points towards the end. The last two minutes were all in Brookwood's hands. Yeah. But 99 points off the rip, off the starting of the map and saving yourselves by the skin of your teeth. It, you, it's hard to come back from. And in the overtime, the special weapons are available. FCS is going to shut that down in an instant. They saved everything for it. And you, you saw that the quick shutdown, as soon as they hit that checkpoint, they were ready and locked in to take this to game five. And what a treat. I mean, game five, grand finals, <laughs> not even the state finals, both of these teams went to game five there. So it's all or nothing. It's Clam Blitz for $6,000 and Oof. just the play versus cup prize here to be the grand champion. Yeah, nice little uh, playback here of that previous map. And honestly, it was just absolute domination out of FCS. And I'd love to see... Look at that. Even when, when your back is against the wall, I'd love to see a team that is willing to come out aggressive. You see the nice little three-piece in the feed. You want to see a team that's down in the series, come out aggressive, immediately put their best foot forward. Then you can make the... Then at least it, it affords you the opportunity to make a couple mistakes here and there and not get severely punished, especially in a game like Splatoon, where if you get it almost the entire course of the map that means they've got to fight you all the way back tooth and nail to get you back into your spawn so you're, you can afford to get splatted once or twice you can afford to kind of slip up here and there you're gonna have two to three more chances to recover get back with your teammates link up which fcs did a fantastic job of just finding ways to get the break every single time brookwood getting it really really close at the end of that map and they're finally able to put those specials together find a bunch in the feed and lay it on the line for game four and i mean like you said clam blitz one game for a $4,000 disparity is absolute insanity. I can't even imagine what the players are going through. Yeah, they got to put their all into this final one. We've been seeing the strategies develop. You saw there in tower control, there was a lot of uh, the paint wall, I believe is what it's yep. called, where you kind of just toss it down. It, it slows down any projectiles, shuts them down. You can't move through it. It's essentially just a deployable wall, deployable shield almost, that you're forcing the movement to be fought around. And, you know, it ended up with some exciting plays for us. Something yeah. like that is what caused, you know, the Splatana to have that cool 3K at the end for Brookwoods, even though it wasn't enough to take them through the overtime. You're seeing those flashes of brilliance, even in the map where they were down so so far and that's why they were 2-0 in the series to start that's the kind of play that is going to take them with for the game five victory take them to the championship to winning that championship yeah, i don't i don't want to be a brookwood hater but based on what i've seen i really think fcs is about to pull off this reverse sweep i really really like what i've seen out of the last two maps i even liked what i saw before they ended up getting the restart i like i feel like now with this, the last two games have felt like that first series we watched from last month where they look really, yes. really dialed in. They know exactly what they're looking for. They're able to execute. They're able to plan things out. So I would have to lead FCS in this game five. I, I think a reverse sweep would be absolutely crazy. But the fact that we are already in game five makes the first four games irrelevant besides momentum, which is obviously going to be on the side of FCS, especially after, I don't want to say dominating win. They, they were dominating and they just got a little bit close at the end, but they tightened it up. But I mean, I, I would think FCS is going to walk away with this game five, but with all the pressure on right, it too is going to rise to the occasion and clutch up. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think we've we've kind of both got our ideas of how this map is gonna play out, but of course it's one map, one game, a 50-50 chance to see who's going to be able to take it. We do have the map to come through. It's going to be the Ink Blot Art Academy here. So that's going to be the Clam Blitz Showdown for number five. I, I It makes me chuckle every time. It's such a funny name for a game mode and you're literally collecting clams the entire time. That's the objective. But in the end, it still comes down to 
objective based game mode yep. going to be a little bit more tailored towards those team fighting because if you have one player with eight to ten clams on his back you want to make sure that deposit goes down and you're going to kind of do everything in your power to support that teammate who's going to make that big play and take a big chunk off of your score so kind of what you're playing for i assume most of these teams it, it always makes the most sense to kind of have yeah one or two players kind of stack up the most but you mm -hmm. know we did see in some games that we were watching earlier there are a few players you know just drop three four five points yep. in the goal when you have the chance and if you have the opportunity take it by all means but you're definitely looking to kind of make those big installments of points and use the time a little bit more valuably around the map yeah your teammates are the objectives in this one as you said you in this game especially you might have somebody if someone plays a more supportive role not necessarily as good at getting in the mix winning out on some of these engagements some of these firefights you're gonna have that person maybe be on clam duty just try to set them up give them a big weapon they can contain themselves or they can play a little bit of defense but they've got those slayers in front of them that could go out there and gain all the space they want that can really be that tip of the spear and be that perfect engage tool but game five of the splatoon three play versus cup finals fcs innovation brookwood high school a rematch of the georgia state championships a mere month ago all the prize on the line and this is for everything oh and i actually am familiar with this map i'm pretty sure this is literally the training mode that you you get into or where you're kind of like a practice range if i'm not that makes mistaken, sense right but... ink Quad academy yeah i could be completely wrong as well don't don't get me wrong here but already seeing that ink wall very yeah. very useful in the close range engagements there and look at all the clams kind of being stacked up you see how fast some of these can be traded kind of back and forth but you do see that number on the top there is kind of the amount per team right now so a little bit more There's and barrier 20 points dropped into that one you can already see FCS taking the lead there. They've got seven more, too. That's a big one to look at. Oh, a ton of points just being dropped on. And yeah, you will have to break that barrier, or break it down once again, once it actually runs out of time. And to be able to get those points and start scoring once again. So it's one of those things where momentum can stack up very, very fast. And then you, know, yes. you get... 38 points dropped on your head before the barrier even comes back for yourself. This time, though, it's Brookwood to make a bit of a stand here. Yeah, they look like they've got a couple more that they could possibly cash in before the barrier goes down, but that is going to be popped back up. So we've got a relatively... A relatively even game is kind of a loose definition, especially when it looks like FCS is stacking a lot of clams on that opposite side. If they can break down this barrier, maybe send in a couple of those special abilities, they might be able to absolutely put a capstone or at least increase this lead by a rather large margin. But both teams, you can see how patient they are now. They know it is game five. They know if I get picked here, if I drop any of these clams or if I'm out of position, this can genuinely be our entire season forced into second place. So I'd love to see the patience, the change of pace right now from both teams. Teams. neither barrier has gone down for the last 30 to 40 seconds but it is mixy in mid oh all of the special weapons popped huge splats down in the mid side but it's not even converted into anything you see the footballs down there as well that's a little thing that's part of this game mode as well you can kind of just use it to disrupt and kind of charge up and, and hit at enemy players there but it does mean when you're carrying the football around it kind of takes the spot of any clams there so once again it, it kind of just enforces the game plan of stack up the clams on a few players and you don't really need to have it split up between everyone but then again it's that risk reward that if your movement if your one tank with all the clan clams goes down it can be very easy to flip the game on its head so far though we have not seen any points scored since our initial bursts for each team here no, and both teams are reaching with their specials. I'm seeing a lot of fancy footwork out of that FCS innovation right now. They are dodging a lot of yeah. these Booyah Bombs, a lot of these strikes, a lot of these big abilities, and they've been doing a really good job understanding that they have the lead as long as they play for mid control and they don't let the other team break that barrier. They do not have to score another point. It's great that if they can try to get one more run in, try to see if they can stack up a lot more of these clams and get a lot more points, but realistically, if they just play team deathmatch for the next minute and 30, they are going to walk away the champions. Yeah. And if you continue doing that, if you maybe break the barrier, find one more opportunity yep. to score, something like that, you can really hammer home that lead. And 
I think that's what they're kind of looking for. I think they're for, just playing yeah, for picks. You can you can see just how reserved this team is playing right now. They're playing for picks. They have a they know. fairly sizable lead. Yeah, it's only it might only be 18 points, but that's a lot when you're looking at the grand scheme of things. There's only 15 on the side of Brookwood right now to even be able to score. Oh. I don't think Brookwood's, I, I honestly don't think they're going to be able to break through the front line because it looks like all this patience is now going to turn into a counterattack uh -oh. potentially. It looked like FCS was trying to make an advance on the base and try to break down the barrier because they were playing stalwart defense on the back line. They had three players positioned in basically sniper towers waiting for anybody to walk up, just holding on to those specials for that right opportunity to wipe everybody out, reset them at that 10-15 second spawn rate. And when it's 25 seconds left in the game, you only got to do that one or two more times and right now Brookwood they are trying everything to break through mid but they cannot find an answer yeah they, they really don't have it within them right now I want to see oh it my. they have so many clams stacked up you just need to find something in this last 10 seconds or FCS is gonna complete the reverse sweep they're gonna take their crowns as the play versus cup champion and there's overtime, overtime. on the board but you gotta see some, some Elim, something to come through. Look at that three down. Respawns maybe come through. The, the barrier. barrier is down. There were points to be there? grabbed, but it's not enough, Everyone... Jobin. They all got taken out. They got four men taken down at the end of the game and in as dramatic a fashion as you could possibly cook up. FCS Innovation, Georgia State Champions, one more to the belt, add another notch, play versus cup champions as well. What a performance by the squad, down to nothing, had to battle back, win three unanswered maps, that last one coming down to an eight point difference in the end they played perfect defense once they got that first big break got the big lead locked down that back end and there was nothing that Brookwood could do they had a great run at the end of the map there they got eight out of the 18 necessary but you just fell a little bit short and FCS I mean talk about grit resilience and talent yeah I mean FCS right there hopefully enjoying their well-deserved pop-up wow. right now all four of those players put in the work towards the end of that series you took the two modes the first two games that were a little rough for you a little tough but you kind of just put it all together for the rest of the series the team play looked a lot better as we mentioned rotating those specials or stacking them up when you yep. needed a nice four player just team wipe and then you give yourself five seconds to breathe as you wait for the other enemy team to really be back up. But FCS Innovation, man, all of them just deserve that victory. You completed the reverse sweep and you get to kind of cement the legacy that you yep. are most definitely the best in Georgia and now just the best in this play versus cup as well. Yeah, it basically for them says, listen, there is no rivalry. This was a yeah. great series. You guys had your fun. It was a fantastic back and forth, but ultimately, ball don't lie. We got both series. First one, a little more dominant. Second one, though, I really, really love to see because the game is so fast paced and so mixy. I love that the second FCS got a lead, the ability to just refrain from running it down and trying to get excited yeah. because when you're in a championship winning moment, I know the comms have got to be going crazy. You've got to start to feel the excitement. You can start to feel the championship. When you've been in a big game, you can start to feel that. You get the chills. It starts to get under your skin. You're like, okay, we are like 30 seconds off winning a championship. So to kind of reel that in, contain that emotion until the end of the game and just play a very, very smart, detailed game plan understanding exactly how you have to win this game which is draining this clock because the only way they could lose go for a break risk it if you have three or four end up dead guess what that opens up the counter attack and you could get absolutely flooded so perfect game plan perfect execution that i mean what a way to cap off your season a reverse sweep and grand finals in a rematch of a team you already beat in another final i mean that is a storybook season for this squad a hundred percent. Congratulations to FCS Innovation Academy and big round of applause to Brookwood High School as well. You yes. put it all on the line in the rematch. You still come second in the Play versus Cup. Still have your claim at $2,000 there close. as your second place prize. But that's pretty much been all from me and Jobin here. It's been a blast to bring you guys the Splatoon 3 finals here. 
for the Play Versus Cup. Once again, congratulations to FCS Innovation Academy there. And without further ado, I think we're going to send it back to the hosts and they'll come back to you with some Madden action coming up right after this. Thank you, Fundy. And wow, what a series, a reverse Jeez. sweep, especially after that game two, which was at any percent speed run. The game ended in like a minute. Like seven seconds. And like, I looked away and then it was over. And you're <laughs> thinking, surely Brookwood is going to be able to do this. And then the, the grit and determination from FCS Innovation Academy to turn it around that. Another banger with two? Two game fives in a row. Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, that's crazy. And even for FCS Innovation to come back from the reset that they had in game three after the disconnect happened from Brookwood, they had to replay that map and they still ended up winning it and then just straight up on the table. And, uh, you know, Jobin and Fundy were talking about it at the end, but for them to just hold, it could be so easy to be like, oh, we killed all of them. You know what? Let's just dump those clams in. Wow. But no, they just held right there. They kept getting the E limbs. That was awesome gameplay. I had a so lot of fun, fun watching that.